There are several thousand collisions involving trains each year, which result in over 1,000 injuries and several hundred deaths. A majority of these deaths occur when someone is struck by a train while trespassing on railroad property. Remember, railroad property is private property. Trespassing along railroad property is not only against the law, it's very dangerous. Avoid taking shortcuts. The only safe place to cross railroad tracks is at a designated crossing. Don't get caught dead on the tracks. Stay off, stay away, stay alive. It's Elmhurst, our kind of town. Hello everyone and welcome to Langhorse Field on the campus of Elmhurst College. I'm Tim Calderwood. Next to me today is Tony Minestra as we bring you Elmhurst College football. The fall brings all kinds of exciting things. With it, the onset of the change of seasons, of course the beginning of school as well, and perhaps most importantly, football season. Today the Elmhurst College Blue Jays will take on Trine University in the first ever meeting between these two institutions on the gridiron and it should be an exciting day here as it's community day and Tony all kinds of excitement here to begin 2012. No doubt about it a lot of excitement surrounding the campus today and Trine coming in a quality opponent from out of the conference but the big thing for the Jays today in head coach Tim Lester's fifth year are they ready to take that next step into the top end of the CCIW conference. For Elmhurst, a lot of returners back on the offensive side of the football, especially a team that has been very vaunted offensively over the last couple of seasons. No bigger name than Scotty Williams, who's back for another year. Well, certainly the headliner for the Blue Jays offense is number 20, Scotty Williams at tailback. In the classroom, he's an academic All-American. On the field, he's an all-conference talent. And by the time Scotty hangs up his cleats at the end of his career, he'll have broken every major rushing record the college has ever known. This Trine Thunder team is far from a pushover. They've improved steadily, made three consecutive NCAA playoff appearances under their current head coach. And they have a few playmakers as well, especially one on the defensive side, and he can also make some noise on the special teams. That is Myron Pereer. Yeah, no doubt about it. Joe Furco, our fourth-year quarter and fourth-year starter, at quarterback is going to need to identify number five on every single play. He's a dangerous playmaker on the defensive side of the ball, but our punt team and our kickoff team are going to need to know where he's at at all times as well. He can really make a difference. The kickoff between Elmhurst and Trine is next. Let's play football. Elmhurst and Trine ready to battle today here at Langhorst Field on what is an absolutely gorgeous afternoon for football. 68 degrees at game time. A few sporadic clouds. Wind is out of the northwest at 14 miles an hour, which will affect some kicking to your right as you view at home. That's where the wind is blowing presently left to right across. Elmhurst will be kicking off to begin the contest. It'll be David Thomas with the honors for the Blue Jays who prepare to meet Trine in a big non-conference showdown. Trine has been a team, Tony, that has taken some significant steps forward over the last five or six years or so, and that has a lot to do with their head coach, Matt Land. Well, Matt Land in his seventh season as a head coach at Trine. He started out 2-8, and eight, a little bit slow in 2006, but since then he's had a winning record in Angola every year since. Uh, that includes some NCAA playoff trips as well from 2008 to 2010. He has an overall record, Tim, of 47 and 18. D'Angelo Fincher is deep, along with Myron Pereer, we referenced in the open today. David Thomas will tee it off, and we're ready to go in a matchup of unbeatens early in 2012. Trying with a 24 14 win last week over Manchester. Elmhurst shutting out Loris. Good way to start. It's the home opener for the Blue Jays, taking on Trine out of Angola, Indiana. Blue Jays line up. Thomas checks the alignment, and we're underway. They will target towards Pereer, who will back all the way up to the end line and force to take a knee. That's one way to avoid the presence of Pereer in the backfield. <laughs> well, having talked to some of the coaches during the week here in the game prep leading up to this, Thomas was a big part of the game plan to keep it away from Pereer. Uh, their, their return game in trying is as dangerous as there is, as we're going to see all season, and that time Thomas just negated that. They'll have to go 80 to score on the Jays. Trine will open on offense. Quarterback is Ryan Hargraves. 
He has Michael Inge as the lone running back. Three wide and a tight end for the Thunder as well. Receivers Mario Brown, Javante Henson, Luke Rausch, tight end Zachary Hess. Hargraves will start under center for Trine in the white uniforms. He'll hand it off right away up the middle. Quick give to the running back. And it is Jared Barton, the first ball carrier, and Barton crosses the 25-yard line. Out to the 28. Did they mark the ball at the 25 off of the touchback? Well, right away you see the no-huddle offense for the Trine, not allowing the Jays to adjust their defense. Hargraves looks to the right, dumps it off for Hens in the slot. Hens crossing the 30 out to the 32-yard line. That, by the way, is a rule change this year, the new spot on the touchbacks, the 25 versus the 20. Gain of about three yards. It'll set up a third and manageable here for the Trine Thunder on the opening possession of the ball game. Well, with Myron Purrier back there for the Thunder, I'd say you take 25 every single time. He returned a kickoff last week, 92 yards for a touchdown that really broke the back of Manchester. Four wide, play fake. Hargraves rolls to his left, sidesteps a tackler, looking for the first down distance, has it shoved out of bounds across the 40-yard line. As the Blue Jays come up with the stop finally, Wayne Tuxin shoving the quarterback Hargraves out of bounds, but it's a first down for trying. Well, Hargraves had a little option route there. He could go to the air or he could tuck it down, and that's just what he did. Cornerback Mark Evangelista, as you'll see here, had a hard time cutting loose of Mario Brown, allowed Hargraves to pick up the first down. Hargraves a couple of touchdowns last week. Ten carries, only 28 yards. But a big pick up there. He's under center. Hands it off. Up the middle, it's Barton. Crossing the 45 near midfield. Barton Gathering about there. seven yards before he's wrestled to the ground. Lane and a little Johnson quick trap there inside for the, the Thunder. And if the Jays are vulnerable anywhere defensively, it might be on that defensive on line. We'll take a look at it here. Not a lot of beef up front. Charlie Roberts, Phipps, and Dan Vicari are the starting three. They all run 250 or lighter. Good job of the trying offensive line, opening some holes for Barton. Barton to the right of Hargraves. And it was an option draw straight ahead onto the Elmhurst side of the field. Barton picks up Barton, the first the ball down carrier for the again. Well, one of the things Trine is doing early is you get to take take a look at their no huddle offense now. If they're running the formation into the boundary, that time with three by one to the near side, the short side of the field, forcing the Jays on defense to decide how are they gonna tilt their defense. First and 10 for Trine on the Elmhurst half. Hargraves looking towards the sideline and the play clock will reset. Doesn't really look like a no huddle with all the time that the Trine's been taking here to set. Now they'll wind it, first and 10 for the Thunder. Hargraves is under center. Three down linemen for Elmhurst. Again, it's a give straight ahead. Barton with some positive running room, picks up about Barton seven to the 42. Tripped up by Robert. Well, it's a three down look for the Jays. They've moved to the 3-3-5 three, three, as you get another look at the quick trap here. They've moved to the 3-3-5, which allows your linebackers to move and react to the football a little bit quicker. But right now, Trine's really taking advantage and hitting them on the, the quick blasts up the middle. To the shotgun for Hargraves. And some motion on the left side of the line for Trine. Elmhurst defensively, the ends are Charlie Roberts and Dan Vicari. The nose, Justin Phipps. Linebackers, Brian Collins and Wayne Tuxin on the outside. George DeMaria in the middle. Two corners, Mark Evangelista and Jamal Lane. Three safeties, Ryan Johnson, Stephen Ritter, Alec Giles. Back up, trying to the Elmhurst 47. It's now a second and nine. And it'll be Hargraves under center here. They're varying the looks, kind of every other snap. Straight ahead give to Barton. Looking for the left side, busting outside, falling forward towards the 40-yard line. The stopped carrier. just shy of a first down. Ryan Johnson with the tackle. Well, they're positioning their H back in a very unique spot. Right sort of tucked underneath the right guard or the left guard as you get another look at it here. Running him across the formation. Long trap that side. Able to bounce it outside and gain some positive yardage. Third and a short two. 
Hargrave surveys the defense with the H back behind him. Elmhurst showing blitz up front. Again, it's Barton straight ahead, still trucking. First down and more for Trine, nearing the Barton Elmhurst the 35. First down and a nice offensive possession to establish the momentum of the game here early for the visiting Thunder. Well, I had a chance to talk to defensive captain and all-conference linebacker Wayne Tuxen yesterday about what it's going to take for the Jays to be successful on defense this year. He gave me a simple answer, Tim. We just have to do what we do and be consistent. Three to the far for Hargraves. Barton on his left hip. Really hasn't been a lot of throwing so far, but spreading out the looks. And now he'll split one wide, dumped off. Catch is made by Javante Hintz, and Hintz keeps on moving towards the first down marker. He'll be stopped just shy. And it's second and short. So far, Trine is not really strayed too far of kind of what their personality is. You get a look at the bubble screen here to Hentz. This is what they do. They use it as almost a long handoff. It's a controlled passing game. It's safe. They trust their wide receivers to make solid blocks downfield, and they're able to move the sticks pretty consistently. Second and short for Trine. Again, formation into the boundary. Three receivers to the far side. And they'll dump it off to Hentz once more, and he lost his footing. A loss of a yard on the play. Last week, Hargraves 13 out of 23 for only 123 yards. Didn't need to do much through the air because Lots Trine was so strong on the ground. Yeah. yeah, both of these teams, Tim, had very similar sort of games last week. Uh, in fact, Loris had a drive very similar to what Trine is putting down on Elmhurst right now. They ran a 20-play drive uh, against the Jays last week, uh, but the Jays did turn them away with a turnover. Likely four down territory, I have to believe. Hargraves is under center. He'll hand it off to Barton yet again. Barton cuts underneath Barton one tackle barrier. and dives forward for a first, first down, down to the Elmhurst 23. And again, very persistent with the quick trap game inside. That time using the H back. Again, right behind the center. Penalty flag on the play. That was well, got a late flag the on the play. Referee for this one is Gary Cuphall. What will he let us know? After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number two. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Giovante Hess after the, the play will so back the down. trying thunder up. Cuphall, the referee, his umpire uh, is Ed Fedvarka. Line Gary judge is Kent Cooper, Walters. Umpire, Jeff Stern is a linesman. Barca. Back judge, John the Hum. Field judge, Walters. Dan Friesen. Side Dan judge, Steve, Steve Lubke. That's the judge, officiating Stern. crew for this one. Field judge, Dan Friesen. And the back judge, John They'll score it as a first and 10 back to the Elmhurst 38. Barton motions to the left, and it's a keep for Hargrave. Straight ahead, huge opening, but a Hargrave good open field carrier. tackle as the Blue Jays linebacker Brian Bonds, Bonds reaches out and brings down Hargraves after a pickup of six. Bacar, yeah, the defense struggled a year ago in 2011 as you get another look at the quarterback draw. And to harken back to what, what Wayne Tuxen had mentioned to me, consistency is the key here. They're going to use a lot of different bodies in and out of the front seven, but if they can put together a consistent effort, force a team, to move down the field consistently, I think this defense can have some success this year in 2012. Might have been more there for Hargraves if he didn't run into Jared Barton. A little blitz package here. Officially five, give is to Barton, straight ahead, and on his backside, Jamal Lane, Lane will stop tackle. him shy of the first down at the 30-yard line. But a time-consuming drive here for Tryon. They've ticked off almost half of the first quarter, and Elmhurst has yet to touch the ball. That's one way to keep a significant offense off the field. No doubt about it. You're talking about the 15th ranked team in the country with the offense uh, of the Jays here. And you said it, Tim, the, the best defense is oftentimes a ball control offense. And Trine is really executing that game plan right now. Third and three. Play clock under 10. Hargraves has to hurry. Got to think draw here. They'll look to the right, dump it off again for Hentz, first down. Hentz still Hentz moving the inside reception. the 25-yard line. And once again, Trine will Gain pick up a first down. 
And again, First nothing down, new for the Jays. Four, They've seen this on film. This is what Trine is. This is their identity, the bubble screens. The safety's on the outside as you get another look at it, a two by two. Just a quick one out there. It's almost like a long handoff. The Elmhurst, outside safeties are gonna have to react quicker. Last week, Elmhurst allowed a total of 10 first downs in the shutout over Loris. They've already allowed four on the opening drive for Tron. Hargraves fakes the draw, skips it onto the right side for a wide open target. And easing his way is a first down to Anthony Yonder who's listed as a quarterback on the roster. That's First actually a very clever play by the University. Thunder. They're really playing on Jamal Lane, the boundary corner's aggressiveness. They run speed, they run pull option the other direction. Lane comes up and they shoot it over to the X receiver. Already eight minutes for trying on this drive. Knocking on the doorstep inside the red zone. Elmhurst showing blitz. Barton straight ahead and he's wrestled the to the ground. On him immediately was Brian Browns who gave up no ground up the middle but a pickup of three on the play. Bonds with the tackle. Gain of three on the play. Pickup of three on the play. Sets up a second and seven for Tron. With the clock moving down to six and a half minutes and still Elmhurst has yet to take the field on offense. Spread the field, have isolation to the near side with Mario Brown. Play fake, roll left, Hargraves looking, throwing over the middle, wide open for the touchdown. Zachary Hess, the sophomore tight end, wide open for the score over the middle. And Trine turns the first possession of the game into points. Well, an extremely well orchestrated first drive of the game for Trine. They had a game plan, they stuck to it. That they executed it very well. Play, the defense is going to have to react. Drive for the Thunder. Officially a 10-yard touchdown pass from Hargraves to Hess, his first touchdown of the season. Had a couple of rushing touchdowns last week, but none through the air. On for the extra point is Tyler Keck. It is up. Air. It is good. 7-0 trying with 6.14 to play to in the opening in the quarter. Third. University Numbers seven. for the Numbers drive for trying an impressive one to say the least. As Trine covers 75 so yards so and does so on 17 plays open to open a 7 0 lead. Please drop in to purchase your. Well, as you mentioned, Tim, last year. week out in uh, Dubuque, the Dewhawks of Loris managed only 162 yards and 10 first downs over the course of four quarters, and Trines nearly met 50% of that here on their first drive. Well, let's see what the offense can do. Tyler Keck will tee it up for the Thunder, who own a 7-0 lead on the scoreboard. You know there's some adjustments that need to be made on the defense, specifically on the line. I would think you almost need to potentially add an extra down lineman to mm -hmm. try and plug some holes up front Williams because there was just way too much running room for trying on the opening possession. Yeah, the linebackers are also going to have to be much more active at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Justin Keck Phipps is playing zero technique. He's a little bit out of position there, and he's still learning the nose man position, so they're going to have to get aggressive up front. First chance for the Blue Jays today. A very short kick into the wind. Will be scooped up at about the 16-yard line. That is James Richardson, freshman out of West Park, Florida. He is dropped immediately. All of his momentum had to take him forward to try and make the catch. It's only a gain of about six yards on the return. But Elmhurst will start from the same spot that Trine opened, first and 10 for the 25. Not a bad strategic move by the Trine coaching staff. As you get a look at Robertson here, cutting into a stiff win. Go ahead and pop the ball up there. Joe Furco out of the gun, hands off to Scotty Williams, seeking an opening up the middle, Ooh, trucking for eight there. yards near the 35 yard line. Elmhurst offensively. Joe Furco, the quarterback, the Scotty tackle. Williams, his running back. Two wide, and Corey Tunn and Chase Hamby. Two tight ends, Vince Gabries, who will basically double as a fullback at times. Likewise for Ryan McGuire. Here's another look at Scotty. His signature play, the inside zone. Behind an offensive line we'll touch on here in a minute. 
Experienced offensive line, experienced offense across the board really for Elmhurst. Furco is a four-year starter. And he'll send Gabriel's in motion. Hand it off to Williams. Williams leapfrogs one tackler, flags fly in. He has a first down across the 35-yard line, but I don't know if it'll stick. Well, the flag came out incredibly late, and it came at the back side of the play. See if we can pick it up on the replay here. Get another look at the wide outside zone play. Holding on the offense, number 28. The 10 yard penalty, second down. Ticket Gabries for the hold, which will back up the Blue Jays. Offensive line, Charlie Hamaki, Adam Connors on the left side, Chris Kirkpatrick to center, Peter Stamos, Adam Smith on the right side, and an experienced group on offense as well. Yeah, if you look at the offensive production for the Jays a year ago, obviously 454 yards a game is a really strong number, but the majority of those difference makers are back this year. Furco out of the gun, rolls to his right, backing up a stiff arm, steps up, plants, throws across the field, wide open for Corey Tun. <laughs> Tun will pick up the first down of the 41 yard line, had to come back to make the catch and slipped, so no further yardage, but a great job by Furco there, using the stiff arm and then throwing across his body the entire length of the field. Well, this is vintage. Joe Furco, he likes to work outside of the parameters of what his job description is from time to time. How about Corey Tun here? Take a look, coming back to the football. Corey's really the only wide receiver with any true game experience coming back for the Jays this year. 5'8 senior who has been banged up during his last two seasons here at Elmhurst. It's Gabriel's in motion. Williams straight ahead. Dropped at the 45 yard line. Certainly everybody knows the name Scotty Williams. He's been an impact player here in the program in now his fourth year. As you get another good look at number 20 here. Averaged almost eight yards a carry, Tim, last week against the Dewhawks. Scored four touchdowns. And here's the first look at the Wildcat. That name might sound familiar. It is Williams with Williams on his hip. <laughs> and Williams will carry just shy of midfield. Josh Williams. Highly sought after freshman out of Downers Grove South. He's the brother of Scotty Williams and has joined the Blue Jays this week out of the Wildcat. Take a look at the Wild Williams here. Old 20 on the side in the hip pocket of his younger brother. And Josh is an interesting story. He was recruited by a lot of Division I programs, ended up at Whitewater, unhappy with their program, found his way back to Elmhurst. We're happy to have him. Furco directs traffic. He'll hand it off to the wingman. And easing his way through traffic for an Elmhurst first down is Tom Lindell, tight end for the Blue Jays. And that's why they like to use those H-backs. Can block, use them almost as a fullback as well. Take a look at this. It's almost like a little veer action. And Tim, you mentioned it. They can use the fullback, H-back. That's a role that Griffin Gibson really mastered last year for the Jays, and it's carried over this year. Two wide to the near side. Williams stands three yards behind Furco. Who drops, play fake, steps up, throws over the middle. Gabriel's is open just out of his reach. Intended for Gabriel's. Good play call there though on first and 10, taking the shot downfield right after trying started to key a little bit on the run. Yeah, a little play action here and Joe does a great job of hiding the football. His eyes are downfield. Now in his fourth year, Tim, he has the ability to not just focus in and target his one receiver. He's able to survey the field, and that time just miss Gabriel's. Four seniors amongst the five on the offensive line for Elmhurst, who trails 7-0 here in the first quarter with just over three minutes remaining. Williams crossing midfield, stutter steps on the move, and a touchdown saving tackle perhaps made by guess who? Myron Pereer. <laughs> Just shy of the 35-yard line, first down Elmhurst. Well, I know number 20 gets all the highlights here, but take a look at this offensive line as you can, in particular Charlie Hamoki on the backside of the play. Number 72 absolutely flattened the linebacker on the backside, allowing the gashing hole there for number 20. The old pancake block. First down for the Blue Jays from the try and 36. 
multiple formations here early for the Jays, shifting receivers and H-backs on both sides of the formation. And movement on the left side before the snap. A little miscommunication on the snap count there. It'll back up Elmhurst to the 41-yard line. The offense, number 77, five-yard penalty. Officially, it'll be charged to Adam Connors, who's the one newcomer on the offensive line. Four seniors and one sophomore. Connors is the sophomore. Yeah, a little bit of hardware in their cabinets as well. Stamos is an all-region pick, and Homoki was an all-conference pick. First and 15. Double wide for the Jays. Furco looking towards the sideline. Gives to Williams. Great. Huge hole up the middle. Williams finds some real estate. Got it, Williams, the down to the 35-yard line, a gain of seven on the play. Incredible job by Peter Stamos, the right guard that time, just Posey crashing down the defensive lineman and allowing the cutback for, the for Scotty Williams. There's not really a whole lot of razzle-dazzle in the Blue Jays' offensive playbook. It's very simple. Inside zone left, outside zone right. The offensive line is just executing at a very high level. Inside of two minutes in the first quarter, one possession for each team. Again, it's Williams opening. Williams spins, and he's tripped up inside the 25-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle made by Blake Combs. When everybody in the stadium, Tim, knows that number 20 is getting the football and you can still crack out 8, 10, 12 yards at a time, you know you have something special going. Those safeties are going to continue to creep up towards the line of scrimmage, and that's when Furco's going to hit him over the top. Man-to-man -man coverage on the edge for the Trine Thunder. First and 10 for the Blue Jays. Furco, play fake, plenty of time, right throwing deep, Gabriel's open and incomplete. That's twice they've targeted Gabriel's and twice just out of his reach. Well, they are getting man-to-man -man coverage because the safeties and linebackers are concerning themselves with the offensive line and, and Scotty Williams in the backfield. So you're going to get some one-on-one -on -one action. These young receivers are going to have to make plays one-on-one. -on -one. That time Gabriel's matched up with a safety linebacker type. It's interesting, too, to see your tight end or fullback running those deep go routes. That'll keep a defense on us. Sure. Second and 10 with 120 to play in the first. Gabriel's in motion to the near side. Williams will follow the block, found an opening inside the 20-yard line. Close to a first down. Looks like they'll spot him just shy. Third and short for Elmhurst. And with the zone blocking scheme, oftentimes it's not the block at the point of attack. As you get a look at Williams here, cut it back. It's the backside guard. It's the center on the backside of the play that allows the crease for the running back to cut it back. Less than a minute to play in the first. Tight formation. Gabriel's in motion. Furco, hands off. Williams will pick up the first down to the 13-yard line. Clock stops with 37 and two tenths to play in the first. First down, Elmhurst. The Blue Jays moving the sticks here in the first quarter. A little four tight end look that time. The outside linebacker safety was able to sneak inside and make a play. But again, Coach Lester and the offensive staff mixing up their play calls, showing some different formations, giving Trine a lot to deal with right now. 13th play of the drive for Elmhurst. Trailing 7-0. Furco pumps, throws, overshoots Gabriel's incomplete. incomplete. <laughs> well, Vince has gotten a lot of shots here. As they run a little wheel route action, he comes in motion. Kind of a switch with the outside receiver as he goes up to the corner. Receiver tries to draw the corner back down. Vince Gabriel's three catches last week, covering 35 yards. Joe Furco only threw the ball 13 times. He was 9 of 13 for 110 yards. Bulk of the offense a week ago from Scotty Williams, who picked up 159 yards and four touchdowns. Here's Williams again, up the middle, tripped up at the 10-yard line. And that might be the way the first quarter comes to a close with Trine holding a 7-0 lead on the board. Big play third down here. That is indeed the end of quarter number one here at Langhorst Field in Elmhurst. Both teams have touched the ball only once, trying seven, Elmhurst nothing, but the Blue Jays on the doorstep, however, facing a big third down 
as we prepare for the second quarter of action. 7-0 trying with the advantage, and Tony, it's it's been a story of the, the offenses so far. Just able to keep the other team's defense on the field. Well, with the exception of a couple of yellow hankies on the field, it's been a very cleanly played game. A couple of great uh, offensive game plans, I think, being executed on both sides of the ball. It's really going to come down to who can make that really special play, either in the kicking game or on defense. Take a look at some of the crowd gathered here on this community day. Langhorse Field actually underwent a little bit of renovation. Sure did. They have some reserved seating now, I understand, and you can also see the Elmhurst Athletics bunting down behind the Elmhurst bench. Elmhurst trailing 7 0. Try and carry the ball for 8 46 in the first half, with Elmhurst right behind him at 6 14. 57 yards on the ground for Trine, 38 through the air, 62 on the ground for Elmhurst, 17 in the air. Jared Burton, nine carries, 41 yards. Brian Hargrave, a perfect six of six for the touchdown. Well, talking to head coach Tim Lester a couple of days ago, he mentioned to me the two biggest factors in any given football game are turnovers and touchdowns. Certainly three points is, is a start, but they want to get six here, absolutely. Wildcat look. Scotty Williams stuttering to his right, cuts inside, and he'll be hit at about the eight yard line. That was not his brother lining up as the quarterback. That was Vince Gabries who lined up as the quarterback and flags fly late. And it might be a late personal foul against Trine because Elmhurst was about to trot on the kicker, David Thomas. Yeah. Let's see if we can potentially pick it up here. Well, a slow developing play. They run the long outside zone. Williams not able to find the crease. Doesn't show up there in that replay, but we'll hear it from the referee. Gary Cuphall sorting it out. First down for the Jays. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Trine. That's the second time the visiting Thunder have been ticketed for unsportsmanlike conduct. Each team with two penalties in the first quarter. One of those, an unsportsmanlike conduct for trying, cost him 15. Automatic first down. First and goal for the Blue Jays from the five. Trailing seven, nothing on the board. Twin to the near side, Williams the lone back. In motion is Lindahl. Williams follows Lindahl, looking for the end zone. Stopped just shy. Gained about four on the play. As Elmhurst tries to even the score, looking to take advantage of a huge break on the penalty from trying. Take a look, another zone play here. Williams able to wiggle his way down to about the three yard line. And Williams sitting right now currently at 32 career touchdowns for the Blue Jays, three seasons and a game and a quarter into his career. He's nine off the all time record for the college. Just underway, second quarter, seven nothing trying. Elmhurst looking to even the score. Furco out of the gun, hands off, Williams looking for the end zone, there. dives, touchdown Elmhurst. Well the Blue Jays get bailed out by a couple of penalties, but they capitalized that time. Scotty Williams already with his fifth touchdown of the season. Crossed 60 yards on the opening drive. It's another 17 play drive. Trine, 80, 75 yards in 17 plays. Elmhurst, yeah. identical. Here's the extra point attempt. It's right down yep. Main Street from Thomas. We're all square, seven aside. Well, Scotty Williams, you mentioned, scored his fifth touchdown of the season. But in addition to being a record setting running back and an academic All American, Scotty was nominated for the All State. AFCA Good Works team. Williams has spent time volunteering with Relay for Life, Character Counts, and Habitat for Humanity while also volunteering at Church Bible School. He's just a great kid as we get another look at his touchdown here. Seven seven. Early second quarter from Langhorst Field. Tim Calder it alongside Tony Minestra. For Elmhurst College football on this community day. It's Elmhurst, our kind of town. Elmhurst off of a 36-0 win over Loris last week, improved to 11-2 on opening day since the year 2000. That is an impressive number. 
Let's get a look at the offense. Regrouping with Coach Lester and his staff. Now Thomas is going to have to deal with the same win that Trine did in the first quarter. This could actually end up in favor of the Blue Jays since they do not have to kick the ball to Pereira. Yep, look for a little pooch punt, coffin corner type of kickoff here. There it is. The Angling towards the far side of the field. Pereira will come up and step out of bounds. It was not Pereira actually. That was Javante Hintz on the return. And he stepped out of bounds at the 27-yard line. So that's where Trine will take over for the second time today after moving the ball immensely on their first drive. We do have a flag after the play. Looks like they're signaling against Elmhurst. I think they may make him kick it again. And it appears to be the case as the defense will come off the field and the special teams will once again head onto the field. Well, when you got Purrier back there, and hence you got some weapons on your special teams unit, absolutely give them another opportunity. Force the Jays to cover again. This is a guy, Purrier, Tim, who, who's also been recognized for some All-American preseason nods here. He's, he's got the talent for it. Plays on an incredible, incredibly successful team in the MIAA. And after last week, he showed off all his talents. He's a dangerous player. So Thomas will now tee it up at the 30. And the kick Thomas high, kick same air. spot. Again, it'll be Hence, Hence at the 24. Cuts inward, and he'll end up at the exact same yep. spot as last time, maybe a five-yard difference, which is a result of the penalty. No great coverage that time by the Blue Jays special teams unit. It was a major point of discussion as we get another look at the return here, this time at Hence. And it was talked about at many points during the week in the prep for Trine. 17 plays, 75 yards, 8 minutes, 46 seconds, the first time the Trine offense was on the field. Hargraves is under center, handing off on first down. Straight ahead, Burton spins away, and he's dropped in the backfield. Officially, we'll call it no gain on the play, second and 10. And again, Tim, we see that H-back tucked in behind the offensive guard. Charlie Roberts with the stop. Trying the quick hitter, it looks like the Jays have might have tightened up some things no up front. No huddle offense for the Thunder. 7-7 seven, seven game, 13-18 to play in the first half. Hargraves gives to Burton. Off left tackle, denied again, only a gain of a pair. Wayne Tuxen reaches out and drops Burton. Burton averaged almost five yards a carry on the opening drive. Elmhurst is ready here on the second trip. Little counter game. They bring the backside H, the backside tackle. They try to swing him around the end, but number 54, Wayne Tuxen, the savvy veteran senior linebacker, sniffs it out. Well, there's one thing that a long drive will allow your defense to do. That's sit on the sidelines, rest, and regroup. Yep, absolutely. Clearly the Blue Jays have done that. Third and eight. Passing situation you would figure for Hargraves. Elmhurst brings the heat over the middle. Pass is dropped right in the breadbasket of Javante Hintz. And he saw the coming pressure and could not hang on. It's a three and out. Well, Alec Giles that time in the shadow of Hintz. And last week out in Dubuque, got a chance to see these Jays live. And Giles and Ritter, as you get another look at it here, are two new starters this year in the back end for the safeties of the Jays. And they made a definite impact last week, coming downhill, making plays. Way to get off the field. First look at Nicholas Meir, who kicked last time six occasions for an average of over 50 yards per punt. He has the wind as well. Pressure coming and a high one into the breeze, end over end. Fair catch signaled oh for and dropped inside the 20, free ball. But it looks like Elmhurst will recover and start from their own 17. <laughs> well, Ritter that time, the safety dropping back to Return the punt, had to corral it. Get a look at it here. 
high soaring punt into the sun. You can see he sets up at the 21 and has to back all the way up with the wind inside the 20. Some late English on it there. So punt inside the 20 for Mir. And Tim, take a look at these safeties as they start to walk down to about 10 yards and under. First and 10 for the Blue Jays, who marched 75 yards on their first possession to score. Williams with space around the left side. Will reach the 21 yard line, not much more. Blake Combs that time, Scotty Williams counterpart number, number 20 for trying, able to come downhill, get off a block and make a play. They've done a good job of forcing Williams into a decision early on today. Yep. He has to either go with the initial call or try and break it out. And that slight moment of pause is where Tryon has been capitalizing. Four yards officially, second and six, flags fly. Free play for Furco. Furco throwing and it's caught. Jeff Deagle the reception, still on his feet across the 30 out to the 34 yard line before he is driven back, but an offside flag will likely be declined here as Elmhurst will accept the result of a first down. Pretty simple pass skeleton here, a little comeback route. And Deagle's a guy, as I talked to wide receivers coach Kyle Derrickson, he's a guy who's a freshman out of a good program up in the north suburbs in Fremd. He's got the size you want in a prototypical wide receiver. He's 6'2", 208, but he's still learning the offense. And we'll see him sprinkled in throughout this Saturday. First and 10 for the Blue Jays. Bit of the Williams tandem again here. The Wildcat look. And it's the younger Williams who keeps straight ahead. Josh Williams picks up five yards shy of the 40. Well, having had the opportunity to interact with Josh as you get a look at him here on his, on his Wildcat look, I gotta tell you, you can tell very quickly where Scotty and Josh get it from. A couple of tremendous parents, the Williams family. And it'll be a similar look. Now keep in mind that the younger Williams has not been here at Elmhurst very long at all, but a huge opening for a first down near midfield. <laughs> Just when CCIW fans and opponents across the league thought they had seen enough of the Williams at Langhorst Field, you get another four years with, Sc with Scotty's brother, Josh. Spotted at midfield, first and 10 for Elmhurst in this 7-7 game. Joshua was a little bit bigger, listed at 5'8", 180, but when you see them walking around campus together, there's definitely a size difference. Joshua built a little bit more in the upper body. Scotty perhaps a little bit more shifty. Very impressive prep career as well at Downers Grove South. Play clock inside of 10 for Furco. Hands off to Scotty Williams. Scotty Williams will pick up two onto the trying side of the 48. Well, as you look up and down the roster for the Jays, obviously the Williams brothers are highlights in the backfield, but you have some pretty good depth there. Take a look at Scotty here, take the handoff from Furco. Andrew Tubek contributed a good season a year ago for the Jays. He's been banged up a little bit. But some solid freshmen as well backing them up. Jays are very deep for the first time in many, many years. Archer Winberg enters on the offensive line. Second and eight. Inside of 10 minutes to play in the first half. Furco drops back, completes. Furco's it's number 15 on once pass. again on the grab. Jeff Deagle, Deagle caught his catch. first pass of the season earlier on this drive. The freshman has been targeted twice by Joe Furco. Real quick play action. And I love what Coach Lester and the offensive staff are doing to keep the trying defense off balance. Play action on first down, throwing on second down, keeping it, keeping it sort of on their toes. And the trying defense here is, is guessing a little bit. Third and short, and a timeout is called. Timeout on the field. Timeout trying with a third and short upcoming for the Blue Jays. Numbers relatively even across the board as well as Joe Furco returns for the Blue Jays. 
Tony, what kind of presence do you have as a fourth-year starter stepping out there under center? Yeah, the biggest, the biggest thing is confidence. I mean, obviously you know the system and you've worked with Coach Lester now for four years, but confidence in the huddle, confidence to make the play, confidence to make that throw or that audible. Williams skips to the right side, still on his feet, twisting near the 30-yard line, stopped shy of a first down. And as you're in the huddle with the other 10 teammates, they look to you as a leader, and they know that they can trust you. Trust is a big part of it that goes right along with the confidence piece. And in a fourth-year quarterback, obviously Joe has a ton of athletic ability. He's added now that, that other half to it where the rest of his teammates can rally around him and trust him and knows he'll make the right play. Quarterback's not really a position where you see a lot of four-year starters sure. because you usually don't put trust in a freshman yep. stepping onto campus for the first time in such a vital position. Absolutely. Wildcat look. Josh Williams flips to Furco. Furco steps up and throws deep. Corey Tun is open. Tun with a catch. <laughs> Flags fly. Tun was dragged down to the 30-yard line, but it's probably going to be pass interference on Trine, which will be negated following the big gainer. What a look. Well, for all the shots they took downfield for Gabries, number 28 was wide open down the opposite hash. Good throw by Furco to put it on Tun, but he did have Gabries wide open on the other side of the field. Officials will talk this over. Take a look here. Great call on second and short. You know if you don't get it, you can come back. What a throw. Yep. Really, you have to credit trying defensively. That's Travis Smith. He didn't give up on the play. Otherwise, that's an easy touchdown. Sure is. And we talked a few possessions ago about trying having to sneak up their safeties and go to man-to-man -to -man coverage, and that's exactly what's happening with the effective running game of the Jays. Corey Tun that time in one-on-one -on -one coverage, double move the corner. First and 10 from the Trine 30. Corey Tun in single coverage near side. Furco hands it off, Scotty Williams. One of the things about Scotty Williams that makes him so phenomenal as a runner is his ability to never stop. He keeps moving until the moment that he is dropped to the ground. His legs almost operate as a locomotive. You can see him sort of churning at all times. And when they run that little inside zone play, he's able to cut it back because his vision is so terrific. But you said the best, the best part of the way Scotty runs is his relentlessness. Elmer's threatening. Inside of five minutes, first half, tied at seven. Furco out of the gun. It's Williams again. No, it's not, it's a play fake. Furco throws over the middle, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Tom Lindell, I was fooled. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing that really has impressed me so far about Joe Furco and watching him now for a fourth season. Those play fakes, he has really improved at hiding the football until the last possible moment. Yeah, and patience too. A lot of quarterbacks when they're younger, they run the play fake, don't hide the ball completely, and they want to get it out of their hand as quickly as possible. Joe is able to show patience, and again, that fourth year shows up, that experience, that confidence in himself and his offensive line. Third and seven. Furco drops back. Good footwork, throws wide open, guess who? Jeff Deagle again, and Deagle inside the 20, down to the 16 with an Elmhurst first down. Coming all the way across the formation, Furco trusting the freshman from Palatine that time. All the way across, a little drag route, moves the sticks. Get a look at it here, the offensive line keeping his jersey clean. Nobody was there. Yeah, and Deagle can go a long way to filling the missing production that they're the Jays are not going to have in Rodney Payton, a dynamic player a year ago. Deagle's got that prototypical size. Three catches so far. Another Wildcat look. This time it's Gabriel as the quarterback. Little jump up front. Gabriel will keep. And he's going to be stopped immediately. No gain on the play. Caleb Nitz was there along with Jeremy Berry up the middle for trying defensively. Tim, one of the huge luxuries that Coach Lester and his offensive staff have this year is they have a ton of versatility. Obviously, if you've seen the, the younger Williams brother and now Gabriel in the Wildcat set and using... Furco out on the edge, but they can use a different combination. We've seen four tight end looks. We've seen three wide. We've seen a lot of different looks. It keeps the defense scrambling. 
And with the play clock winding down, wouldn't be surprised to see Elmhurst spend a timeout here with 3.22 to play in the half. Even at seven aside, it is indeed a timeout. Well, we knew coming into this Saturday that this would be an incredibly competitive matchup. Strong program in Trine coming out of Angola. They've won their conference now the last couple of years. Elmhurst really fighting to inch towards the top of their conference. Incredible game here today. Second and 10 coming for the Blue Jays out of the timeout. Well, today's game, Tim, is the first of back-to-back -back home games for the Jays and the first of six contests here at Langhorse Field. Next week, the Blue Jays will take on University of Chicago in a revenge game of sorts under the lights here at Langhorse Field. CCIW last week, five and three. You mentioned a revenge game. Well, Elmhurst had an unbelievable record in the month of September, a 28-game win streak snapped last year by Chicago yep. on September 17th, 33-26. Overall, over the last 10 years, Elmhurst 29-2 and with both of those losses coming to Chicago. You know, it's funny, I was in the, on the field down in Hyde Park last year and you, and you just had the feeling that the Jays sort of let that one go. And you can bet next week, this Saturday, they'll remember that weekend in September a year ago. Second and 10. Furco to throw, buys time, looking left, stiff arms, and he's tripped up at the 20-yard line. Officially, we'll call it a sack. As Tony Miranda comes up and denies Joe Furco, just too long to develop there. I think you need to make a decision one way or the other, run or throw. Yeah, earlier in the drive, Tim, we talked about There's how... There's where he made the decision. Yep, absolutely. We talked how confidence can help. An older quarterback, a more seasoned quarterback, that time confidence actually hurt him that he could make the play. You need to throw it out of bounds, save the yardage, come back and fight another down. Third and 14 and a timeout for Trine. Tied up, seven aside. Pretty good record here at Langhorse Field under head coach Tim Lester. He's in his fifth season. Five and one a year ago in six home games. He's 12 and nine overall here at the college. Incredible atmosphere. You mentioned earlier sort of the upgrades. They've wrapped the field a little bit here with the fences and some of the reserve seating. They've really turned Langhorse Field into a pretty incredible Saturday afternoon experience. And the great thing about early fall, still warm enough for the short sleeves yeah. as you saw moments ago. Absolutely. Spring and early fall, my favorites. Late fall when it's raining, not so much. But I'll take mid-60s and sunny any day of the week. Third and 14 for Elmhurst with 3.10 to play in the half. 7-7 seven, seven game. Blue Jays are on the trine 20. Double wide to the near side. Furco stepping, throwing, looking, and he overshoots his receiver. That ball should have been intercepted. But it is in and out of the hands for Trine's D'Angelo Fincher. Well, they picked up the blitz. Trine brought a little pressure on the edge. Furco may have rushed it a little bit, forced it into double coverage, and that, that missed interception is big because now with David Thomas, Thomas, I'm sorry, for the Jays, he's got a big leg, and this is a reasonable shot for him to get three on the board. Hit a 42-yarder last week at Loris. This is officially a 36-yard try for Thomas, trying to hand Elmhurst the lead for the first time today. Good look at it. Snap is good, hold is good, Thomas kick is up in into the wind, and through. Elmhurst leads for the first time at 10-7. Now that's a weapon that the Jays did not have a year ago. Their special teams were lacking that big leg. Uh, Thomas that time knocking it through. Once you get inside the 30-yard line, he's pretty accurate. So that's just another weapon that Coach Lester can use in his arsenal. Just talking about the CCIW, let's let you know about all of the other action today. Plenty of action around the conference. Non-conference slate continuing. First conference games will come on September 29th. So you get a look at the field goal from Thomas and a good hold. 
Elmhurst 10, Trine 7. Wheaton's at Albion today. Hope is at Milliken. Alma's at Illinois Wesleyan. Augustana is at Central. And later on tonight, North Park will welcome Benedictine. Those are the games around the CCIW today. Some surprising results from last week, Tony, when you look down the scores. I think a lot of people were expecting North Park potentially to take a step forward. Uh, granted, they played a good hope squad mm -hmm. out of the Michigan Conference, the same conference as Trine, but were handled pretty easily 42-24. And the big surprise last week was Wisconsin Lacrosse heading to Naperville and upsetting North Central 21-17 in a ball game where Lacrosse really didn't move the football, but an opportunistic defense yep. scored a pair of touchdowns. North Central run won everywhere on the stat sheet with the exception of the final score. Lateral back into the Perrier. And Perrier, not a whole lot more there. A little gingerly making his way up is Jeremy Berry for trying defensively, who will jog off under his own power. You know, one of the scores, as you mentioned last week, is, is Augustana struggling again this year. They had a tough year in 2011. But That's a good Dubuque team they lost. Sure, to, sure, absolutely. But, you know, Augustana, it doesn't seem that long ago when. When the Vikings rolled into town, you were pretty worried about things, but that program has seen some hard times. Dubuque at NCAA playoff team last year, but they are missing the Gallardi Trophy winner who graduated. 10-7 Elmhurst, 2.59 to play. Big possession here for the Trine Thunder. Just under three minutes. We'll see if the Jays' defense can turn them away and get the ball back one more time. Hargraves looking to throw. Pressure coming. He sidesteps. Eases his way Ooh. across and is clocked. That was Tuxin with a game-changing hit. Hello. Well, our video may have cut out a little bit earlier in the game as you'll get another look, but earlier we saw Joe Furco lay a shoulder and take out a linebacker. This time Hargraves tries it on Tuxin and that's not Ooh. happening. I don't think so. Dump off into the vicinity of Javante Hintz, who will pick up a first down. The two-minute offense isn't really a whole lot of difference for trying because they run the hurry up to begin with. And they do have a first down set up at their own 44-yard line. They're opening up the formation here a little bit. Not so much H-back tight end look. They're using four wides, three wide looks. But like you said, Tim, they're always in hurry up mode so this is sort of natural for the Thunder. If you're looking for range for the kicker Tyler Keck to potentially tie the game he only tried one last week and was successful from 39. Pump fake for Hargraves. Throws picked. Had a boy Jamal. Jamal Lane at the 41 yard line with the interception for the Blue Jays. Well they're doing some things different this year are the Blue Jays on defense. Jamal Lane's playing a little more hugged up coverage, kind of a squat coverage playing underneath routes, and he's able to make a play on the ball there. Take another look. Did Hargraves never see him? Kind of looked like it. Well, they're trying to use the inside slot receiver to influence Lane to come up, but he hung back long enough and was able to take on the, the deeper route underneath the safety. Great play by number five. Less than two minutes, less than two minutes in the first half. Furco hands off to Williams, running right. Williams turning in. Williams with a first down as a flag flies onto the trying side of the field. Elmhurst has an opportunity here, coming off of a field goal to potentially turn a turnover into more points before the half. But let's see what the flag is about. Looks like they may get Gabriel's on the edge there. I was initially going to recognize him for a pretty solid block on the edge, able to spring Williams, but it may get him here for the hold. And it is officially a hold on the Blue Jays, which will negate the first down run from Scotty Williams. Well, only one timeout left for trying. They used him on a previous possession. Boy, Under Wheaton is being pressed today as I look at the scores. Yep. Albion in Michigan, 21-15, Wheaton in the fourth. How about that? First and 20 might change your strategy here if you're the Blue Jays. Now ticking under 140. Perko rolls left, pumps, throws, looking for Tun. Under shoots him a little bit. Tun comes back to the football to make the catch. A little bit of an underthrown ball, but Tun came back to make the play, picks up five on top of it. First down at the 25. 
Well, Corey Tunn, that senior receiver, you're looking for someone to step out in this receiving core and make a play. Furco trusts him. Take a little pump fake, a little out and up by number two. Came back to the football. Cornerback in pretty good position, but just didn't look back and locate the ball. Second big catch for Tun today, his fourth reception of the season. First and 10 for Elmhurst from the trying 25. Scotty Williams finds an opening. Williams keeps moving inside the 20 down to the 17. And because Williams is so explosive, averaging almost eight yards of play last week, he's still an effective runner in the two minute offense here as we tick under 115 now left in the half. Perko directing the offense. Second and a long three. Williams straight ahead near the first down marker. Does he have it? Looks like it. Clock will stop on a first down for the Blue Jays at the trying 15 with 102 to play in the half. Some quick personnel changes. On comes Josh Williams. And the Blue Jays will look for the potential Wildcat offense here. Thomas has shown off his leg already. You know you're in pretty good position for the field goal, but you want to go ahead and twist the knife and put it in for six. Furco split wide right. Josh Williams looks to throw, and he's driven out of bounds at the 19-yard yep. line. Out of bounds, far side of the field. Tyler Guzzi stepped up with the stop Walker and try. Take a look at Williams here. Makes a good decision there. Does not want to put the ball in harm's way. Goes ahead and takes a little bit of a loss there. Ryan Hogan with a stop as well. And Josh Williams will depart with 45 and 4 tenths to yeah. play in the half. Second and 14 for Elmhurst. Leading 10-7 here at home on Community Day. Williams lines up to the right of Furco. Out of the gun. Give is to Williams. Williams on his feet inside the 10. Spins inside and is stopped just shy of the goal line. With 36 seconds to play in the half, Scotty Williams with another big gainer for the Blue Jays. Clock stops on the move of the chains as you get a look at the wide zone here. They pull the backside H back, but Scotty's speed and agility really gets him to the corner here. Terrific blocks downfield by the receivers. 30 seconds to play in the half. Furco hands it off. Williams is hit initially, continues to drive and is denied. Elmhurst does have two timeouts remaining. They'll use one of them here with 19 and four tenths to play in the half, leading 10-7. Well, obviously a pivotal point in the football game here with the Blue Jays receiving the ball after the half. A three-point lead already. The Triumph Thunder has got to turn away the Jays if they want to hang with them. Here's the run to Williams again, going back a couple of plays. Nice inside move there. That's what set up the current position for the Blue Jays, who are facing a second and goal. One timeout left for each team. 19.4 left in the half. The home opener for Elmhurst from Langhorst Field. A look inside the Blue Jay huddle. Joe Furco with his helmet off. Well, Scotty looking for his sixth touchdown of the early season here. We mentioned in the open what a tremendous individual he is, a tremendous citizen, great student. He's Elmhurst's third academic All-American in the last four years, and one heck of a football player, too. What a wildcat look here, Tim. Gabriel's the quarterback. Furco wide to the right. Gabriel's keeps left side, trucking towards the end zone. Ball is loose. The ball is loose, and Elmhurst falls on top for the touchdown. A break for the Blue Jays. Boy, they run right off the back of Charlie Hamoki. They may credit Charlie with the touchdown there as it popped out of Gabriel's hands. They sure do. It's going to go to Hamoki, number 72. An odd touchdown, but six points nonetheless for the Blue Jays. Thomas looking to make it a 10-point game. Low snap, kick, kick is up, air. and through. 17-7 in the closing nine, moments of the first half. The, first the Blue Jays and receive a break seven, out of the Wildcat nine, formation. Gabriel had the po football poked away. And 
Very opportunistic offensive line records the touchdown. Get another look at it here. They just run man on man. It's almost a lead play. It does kind of pop out there. And Charlie's Johnny on the spot. I believe that's 77 actually. Adam Connors on the recovery. Yes. Yep, you got it. Big day for Adam Connors. 6'3", 255 sophomore, rotating in at left guard. Just under 14 seconds left to go in the half. Feeling pretty good about yourselves, but you always know that Myron Purrier is back there. He was named the special teams player of the week with a 92-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Thomas to kick off for the Blue Jays. Seventeen seven Elmhurst. I guess the trying team that won seven games a season ago mm -hmm. was just on the outside looking in in terms of the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association standings. Albion actually won the automatic bid. It is airborne. Yep, same strategy. And it'll be picked up by Javante Hess. Hess with an opening. Hess left side. Hess keeps moving, crossing the 35. Out of bounds to the 37-yard line. And Tryon will have time for one, maybe two plays here with a timeout. Pretty stiff wind at your back here as you get another look at Hens. you got to hold your breath anytime your coverage unit here with Hens and Courier back there. Blue Jays doing a nice job. They'll pull back the back half of their secondary. First and 10 for Trine. Looks like they will run a play. Ryan Hargraves in the shotgun formation with four wide. Oftentimes your best bet here is just to get it underneath and try to work the ball around a little bit and hope for a broken play. Hargraves. To the near sideline, catch is made by Mario Brown. Mario Brown out of bounds. Clock will stop with one second remaining. That's a terrific decision by Brown that time, understanding the clock, getting yourself and your offense in a little bit of a better position to make a heave ho. One last shot at the Big Ben play here. 17-7 Elmhurst. No opportunity for three, obviously. So Hargraves will air it out and quad receivers to the far side. Hargraves stands at the 50 as he drops, steps up into the pocket, looking to throw deep down the far side. Has a lot of targets there. It's knocked around and falls incomplete. Primary target was Mario Brown, but take your pick amongst the four receivers for trying. Good job by the Blue Jays secondary, knocking it away. Good protection, gave him a shot here. Pretty good throw, actually. Good job by the Blue Jays to have great possession and knock it down. That was actually in the hands, it looked like, of the target as well. As Anthony Yoder was in the vicinity for trying, and it was pushed away. And with that, we head to the half. 17-7 Elmhurst with the lead at the break. Very eventful first 30 minutes of play here in the home opener for the Blue Jays. As we wait for the official introduction of the Blue Jay backers presenting their annual community service award here in moments. The officials have to wait for both teams to leave before the clock can start to roll. That's what we're waiting for. And now they'll wind it as both teams have officially exited and we have reached the half here at Langhorst Field. Elmhurst with a 17-7 lead. On Community Day here at Langhorse Field, it's a tradition for the Blue Jay backers to present their annual Community Service Award. Today it's Bill Shanklin, the CEO of Champion Container here in Elmhurst. He's helped Elmhurst students with internships and mentoring programs, while also volunteering with numerous service clubs throughout the city as they make their way towards midfield to officially present him with the Community Service Award. Again, it is a tradition here at Elmhurst 
for Community Day. We'll be joined by our president here at the college, Dr. S. Allen Ray, and our athletic director as well, Coach Paul Crone. This year's recipient is Mr. Bill Shanklin. Bill is a longtime supporter of Elmhurst College, Blue Jay Athletics, and a dedicated community activist. Bill, for your loyal support of Elmhurst College, your enthusiastic and visible presence as a Blue Jay Athletic Department supporter, and for your countless hours of service within the Elmhurst community, this award is presented to you. Congratulations. Joining Bill at midfield. Our past recipients of the Community Service Award Daryl Whistler, Jeannie Urich, and Bill Gooch. The award is being presented by Elmhurst College President Alan Ray and Athletic Director Paul Crone. Congratulations, Bill, and thank you. It's a true honor to recognize Bill Shanklin for his contributions to the Elmhurst College community and his lifelong dedicated service to the community of Elmhurst. Bill is an exceptional community leader and is recognized as a dear friend of the college. The college is extremely happy to present this award to someone so deserving. Congratulations, Bill Ch Again, congratulations to Bill Shanklin. A big day for the CCIW and the MIAA. CCIW with several head-to-head -head contests against the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association, including the one in front of you right now. Elmhurst 17, trying seven at the half. We'll run down the full statistics for you in just a moment. First though, a huge upset. Speaking of the MIAA, Albion 22, 10th ranked Wheaton 21 in a big, big win for the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association early in this 2012 season. Well, a deep conference top to bottom. We're getting a look at Trine here. But Albion College, great win for them out in the MIAA. As you mentioned, a lot of cross-conference action today. Hope playing. Seen Alma taking on Wesleyan. Four games in total between the MIAA and the CCIW today. In the first half, Elmhurst outgained Trine, 261 yards to 151. The Blue Jays ran 11 more plays, 40 compared to 29. Pretty good balance for Elmhurst. That sticks out to me right away. 129 yards on the ground on 29 carries, 132 yards through the air. Josh Williams is back deep to receive for the Blue Jays. Richardson alongside as we are ready to begin the second half between Elmhurst and Trine today. Well, the first day we've gotten to see two Williams brothers together here at Langhorse Field. So far, so good. From the 25-yard line, it's a short kick and absolutely no gain there. Maybe four yards on the return. Elmhurst will start. Contest began with both teams. Lengthy drives. 17 play, 75-yard drives for both Elmhurst and Trine to open the ball game. Trines took 8 minutes and 46 seconds. Zach Hess got a 10-yard pass from Ryan Hargraves. Scotty Williams, his fifth touchdown of the season on a two-yard dive to cap a 17-play, 75-yard drive, which spans 7-17 to tie the game for the Blue Jays, who have scored 17 unanswered. First and 10 for Elmhurst, starting from their own 30. Joe Furco is the quarterback for the Blue Jays. Behind him is Scotty Williams. Williams over 100 yards on the ground in the first half. 
20 carries, 107 yards, a long only of 17 for Williams. So Trine has done a decent job of shutting down the big play on the ground. It's not been the case, though, in the air. Handoff to Williams. Williams on his feet, tripped up. And a nice tackle made by Blake Holmes to stop Williams from busting that loose. Well, just another day at the office for Scotty Williams. You mentioned 107 yards in the first half. It took him 20 carries to get there. A little over five a carry as you get another look at his first carry of the second half. What stands out to me in the statistics, Tim, is the, the 132 passing yards for Elmhurst. Good, strong number, but it was done on six completions. So Joe Furco missed a couple of early balls down the field to Gabries, but wasn't afraid to push it down a ton. Corey Tunn, a big first half, three catches, 103 yards. Gabriel's in motion. Williams the give. First down distance for the Blue Jays across the 40 near the 45. Corey Tunn with a long of 45. He had a couple of big catches in the first half. Real in from Joe Furco, who was 6 of 11. Time of possession. Elmhurst with a slight advantage there, almost 16 minutes compared to trying just over 14. Trying 87 yards on the ground, 64 yards through the air in the first half. Ryan Hargraves, 8 of 11, the quarterback for Trine. First and 10 for Elmhurst, just underway in the second half. Blue Jays up 17-7. Furco checks off at the line. As he backs up, options right. Furco will keep, and Furco is upended Furco after a gain of three there. yards. Tyler Guzzi in the stop for stop. Trine. Second and seven. Well, this possession play. for the Jays is you get a look at Joe Furco checking to the speed option. This possession is, is big for both teams. Trine is an offense that likes to value balance, using a lot of their bubble screens, trap game inside to control the football and control the post of the game. If the Jays put points on the board here, it makes it a three score game and forces you out of your game plan. Again, it's Gabriel's in motion to the left. Williams follows Gabriel's to an opening. Big play. Williams on his way inside the 30, but he lost the football. Williams fumbled at the 30 yard line. Trine pounces on top, but it looks like the line judge is going to rule that Williams was down. Yeah. They're calling him down, a first down for Williams and a break. Line judge has the play here. He made an emphatic single, first down for the Jays. We'll get another look at it here. Watch Scotty Williams just absolutely explode through the offensive line and into the secondary. Knee down. Perhaps maybe the ball coming loose a little bit there, but the call goes the Blue Jays' way. It'll be first and 10 inside the 30-yard line for the Blue Jays. Tyler Guzzi thought he had the strip, but Williams was down on the ground. Spotted at the 30, first and 10. Furco. Hands it off. Williams running left, up the middle. Cannot rid himself of one tackler, otherwise he is into the end zone. As Aaron Wolf drags down Williams right near the sticks. Obviously not much has changed for the Blue Jays' plan of attack here in the second half. Not at all, and like we mentioned early, there is not a lot of razzle-dazzle in the game plan. It is zone left, zone right, and you allow Scotty Williams to use his vision and his explosive nature running the football to gain your yardage. Second and short. Could take a chance here if you want. Play fake. And he Furco will. hides it. Rolls to his right. Plenty of time. Has to hurry now. Angling towards the near sideline. Furco stepping up. Throwing behind his target. Had to throw across his body. He was looking for Tom Lindell. It falls incomplete. Third and short. Well, they bring in their heavy package here. It looks like four tight ends into the game. Little play action look as you get another look at Furco booting. We recognize his play action ability early in the game. Very patient. Step behind his tight end. Third and short. Bunch formation. Furco hands it off. Scotty Williams, first down. Williams, Towards the 15-yard line, Elmhurst in the red zone. Down, Blue Jays in the first half, three of three in red zone opportunities, two touchdowns and a field goal. Absolutely have to convert inside the red zone, get another look at the bread and butter, the inside zone. Scotty Williams cutting it back, squeaking through for the first down. And the big difference in the game so far has been the adjustments, trying not able 
to solve this zone rushing attack for the Jays. Blue Jays, after the first possession, able to lock down the Thunder. Williams straight ahead. Inside the Battle 10, the down to the nine yard line. Well, it's a slow burn for the Jays on offense. Take another look here. Again, the inside zone. Williams, number 20, cutting it back with his great vision. I like the numbers on the side of the helmet, the addition to the Blue Jays this year. His touch this year. Shield on the left side, the numbers on the right. Of course, the dark navy jerseys today, but we'll get a chance to see some of the, some of the lighter Blue Jay blue later in the season as well. Play fake. Furco dumps it off, incomplete. Ryan McGuire, the target. Don't know if he was expecting Furco to keep or what, as we potentially get a replay here. You'll see Furco had a ton of space in front of him to tuck and run if he wanted as well. Yeah, McGuire's a, a guy who's flipped sides of the football here a couple of times in his Blue Jay career. He's a senior now. As he comes across the formation, Furco really rushes it a little bit Look here. Look at there's nobody on that side of the field Goodness. that Furco wanted to run. Chance to get it back here on third down. Wildcat look. Gabriel's at quarterback. Furco split wide left. Williams the lone back. Gabriel's will keep, but flags fly before the snap. Only flag on the play. Let's say the one area that Elmhurst would like to improve on on the, on the ground game is the Wildcat. They haven't really been able to pick up very much yardage out of it so far. Today. On the offense, number seven, five yard penalty. Joe Furco was down. moving. <laughs> But well, one thing putting the Wildcat on film in week two will do as you head into the CCIW season down the road, it's going to give teams reasons to worry and they have to practice and set those things up in practice, at least for a, here's to get another look at here, Gabris. Teams will have to prepare for your look. So whether it's Josh Williams or Gabris or reverse plays, passes like we've seen in this game, you have to prepare for it. By week is week three, Gabris in motion to the left. Williams to the left side, seeks some space. Williams to Great the outside, move. touchdown! Great little sidestep by number 20. Scotty Williams is in for his third, excuse me, second. Didn't credit the second touchdown to him. But a great move, and how about on third down, putting him in the belly of number 20, letting him do the work. 10 plays, 70 yards for Elmhurst in four minutes and 25 seconds to open the second half. It's now 23-7. Lincoln with the hold. David Thomas looking to add the extra points. High snap, but it's put kick down and the air. kick is up and, and good. 10.35 left in the third quarter. Elmhurst College. Jake Lincoln, by the way, is the holder. He's a senior for Elmhurst out of Rock Island. Big time possession that, that time for the Jays. Able to march right down the football field. Take a look at this, third down. Scotty Williams right behind Charlie Hamoki, his left tackle, sidesteps the defender on his way to Pater. Big play for the Jays. Williams now with 179 yards rushing. He did all of the damage on that drive. Well, what's even more impressive, Tim, is that everyone in the stadium, everyone on trying sidelines knows that number 20 is going to get the football 20 to 30 times in the football game. It's just a matter of stopping him, and very few teams have been successful in doing that over the last four years. 24-7 Elmhurst. Trine will have the opportunity to take to the field for the first time here on offense in the second half. Ball blows off the tee, a great day for football. Early fall. Well, Scotty is now knocking on the door right in the shadow of George Donald for second place on the career rushing yardage list at Elmhurst College. Donald play here from 77 to 80. He'll need another week to catch Luna most likely, but he'll get there. Beautiful kick. And retreating on it with no opportunity to return is the dangerous Myron Perrier for Trine, who has really been taken out of the equation today by Elmhurst on both sides of the football. Absolutely. You took the words right out of my mouth. We highlighted him in the open of the game, and he 
has not even shown up in the stat line, not a return, not a play on defense. They've really negated Purrier today. 92-yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week. Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association Special Teams Player of the Week. Hey, here's a big one, right? First, first possession for trying, 17 plays, 75 yards. Since then, since that first drive, 12 plays, 75 yards. Hargraves under center. He'll hand it off up the middle. Barton, the ball carrier. And the ball carrier is Jared Barton, who picked up 64 yards on the ground in the first half, averaging just under five yards Ryan per carry. He'll gain Bears. eight on his first touch in the second half. And second and short for Trine. Well, since that first possession, with play. the exception of the play right before the half, the Thunder have not earned a first down. Play fake. Hargraves rolls right. He's going to keep. Plenty of room for Hargraves. Lowers Hargraves the shoulder. The crosses the 40-yard line. He's out of bounds for a fine first down. And a flag will come in after the fact on the far side of the field. Flag on the play. Hargraves made his way out of bounds. If you're wondering, and I know you are, we'll run down the home schedule for the Blue Jays here in a moment. Take a look at the boot here. Hargraves out on the edge. Makes a good decision. Lowers the shoulder that time. And that's that, going to be on Jamal Lane yep. is what they're going to call. Absolutely. And Lane was already on top of Hargraves, as you can see on the replay. Well, Jamal plays very aggressive. They've shifted the scheme a little bit this year in order to accommodate his aggressive style, but that time really driving Hargraves into the ground unnecessarily. One more home game for the Blue Jays in the non-conference season. September 15th against Chicago under the lights here at Langhorse Field. Idle on September 22nd. Conference opener, September 29th at North Central. Yep, big one under the lights. 24-7. Hargraves hands it off straight ahead. And Barton about five yards up the middle for Barton. Other games for the Blue Jays at home this year, October 6th against Augustana, October 13th against Wheaton, who entering the standings today was 10th nationally. They just lost, though, to Albion. North Park and Illinois Wesleyan also on the home slate for the Blue Jays this year. Six in all for the Jays. It's a very attractive schedule. Clock ticking, 9-10 to play. Third quarter. Play fake for Hargraves. Has time. Angles to his right. And he'll step out of bounds. No gain on the play officially. Tucks in, forced him out of play. Can't say enough about what Wayne Tuxen's been able to do today. Led Elmhurst with five first half tackles. It's been an absolute anchor as you look at Hargraves trying to work downfield. Very little pass rush pressure by the Blue Jays, but Tuxen able to hold his ground there and force a third down. Four down territory, you have to believe, if Trine can't convert here. Well, you're in against the wind here. You don't want to punt it back to the Jays. They've showed no ability to stop the Blue Jays. Here now, as we tick down under nine minutes left to go in the third quarter. 24 unanswered points for Elmhurst after Trine scored on the very first drive today. Very little up the yeah. middle for Jared Barton, who is hit immediately, picks up maybe three yards. It's going to be fourth and short. Extremely conservative call by the Trine coaching staff there. You have a third and seven, obviously setting up now a fourth and three, a manageable down, but you don't want to come down to a one and done situation if you're the Thunder. Ball is spotted at the Elmhurst 38-yard line. Trine will line up. Hargraves Still, under center. Still a lot of time to go in the game, but this is a pivotal moment here on fourth down. Play fake. Hargraves rolls left. He'll keep, has the first down. Hargraves still on the move. Inside the 30, drilled out of bounds at the 25-yard line of first down as the visiting Thunder are able to convert on fourth down. Their first fourth down attempt today results in a fresh set. Well, Trine's going to struggle to hang with the Jays the rest of the day if they're not willing to put the ball down the field. This time Hargraves has no intention of throwing the football. As you watch his eyes, he is waiting for his blocks to develop. It's a run all the way. But they haven't really tried to put it downfield all day. A lot of bubble screens underneath yep, have been very the pass plays. First and 10. 
Barton angles left and he's tripped up. Good tackle for the Blue Jays. Charlie Roberts. And Barton is shaken up. Outstanding effort by the defensive end, the junior, Charlie Roberts. Training staff will come on for Trine to have a look at Barton. See if we can see where he may have been shaken up. Take a look at Roberts out of West Catholic. Oh, caught a stinger maybe. As Evangelista came up to finish off the play. So he'll exit stage left for the first time. A look at Michael Inge, who was actually listed as the starter entering play today. Motion to the left, play to the right, hence the reception, hence with a huge hold, but created by virtue of a hold. Yeah, Mario Brown is going to complain to the referee, and immediately the flag came out as Marvin Carr was driven to the turf. The flag came out pretty quick. Elmer Staff saying back it up. Take a look here as you get another clean shot of it. Hold was right there. See, it got him in tight. Holding on the offense, number one. Could be a 10 yard penalty. First down. Well, a little schematic answer to what they're doing with the bubble screen. The coaching staff of the Jays have moved Jamal Lane to the inside receiver, the number two receiver, when they split two out. That way he can be a little bit more physical in space with some of the trine receivers. Second and 21 for the Thunder. Basically an 11 yard penalty because it happened at point of attack. Running back remains Inge to the left of the quarterback Hargraves. Trips to the near side, Hargraves will keep. Steps up, runs right, opening for Hargraves. Picks up Hargraves the penalty yardage, back to the original line of scrimmage at the 25 yard line. Gain of 11 for Hargraves on the keep. Yeah, and again, a, a design play. That's in the, that's in the scheme of the play. Hargraves goes ahead and tucks it down. Take a look. Defense playing a little bit soft on the back end, allows him to gain back the penalty yardage. But a third and, third and ten, it's going to look like here for the Thunder. Six and a half to play. Twenty-four seven Elmhurst. Hargraves with 55 yards on the ground on eight carries. Trying over 100 yards rushing. Hargraves now looking to throw. Steps out. Slides to his right. Complete. Inside the 10-yard line and hustling down towards the five. Luke Rausch. Well, Hargraves' feet are really what's keeping Trine in this football game right now. He's very nimble. Able to get outside the pocket. Take a look at it here. He's downfield, downfield, tucks it down. By pushing that line of scrimmage, he forces the, the defense up, able to get it over the top. Nice play. First catch of the season for Roush. First and goal for Trine. Hargraves hands it up the middle. Inge into the end zone. Touchdown, Trine. First touchdown for Trine since the opening drive of the game, and that is a big answer Absolutely. for the visiting Thunder. Huge fourth down play earlier in the drive at about the 30-yard line. Really made that drive happen, and Hargraves carried the Thunder on his back up down the field. Penalty flag looks like after the play, Trine was very emphatically celebrating there, so maybe they were called for the excessive celebration. After the play was it is an unsportsmanlike, but it's signaled against Elmhurst. Our penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Which will be enforced on the kickoff, according to oh our boy. officials. Back to attempt the extra point. Gary Cuphall, the referee. Tyler Keck on for the extra point. High snap, low kick to the right and no good. Hooked it right. 24-13, Elmhurst in front with 5.54 to play in the third quarter. Well, the wind is pretty nasty and he was kicking right into the teeth of it that time. I don't think he was helped out by the high snap either. Take a look. Oh, here's the, here's the touchdown as they run the little inside trap. It's been their go-to play for most of the afternoon. Another angle for you.
Strong answer by trying to hang close here. Now down just 11 points as we get another look. He kind of pushed it, didn't he? And it was out of a high snap, but yep. yes. Well, if he had kept it straight, number 96, Justin Phipps is 6'5", 250. Very adept at getting a paw up and blocking the football and those extra points, those low line drivers. Elmhurst sideline, home opener for the Blue Jays, community day here at Elmhurst College. Nice halftime ceremony as the Blue Jay backers presented their community service award to Elmhurst resident Bill Shanklin. 5.54 to play in the third, 24-13. Trine will be kicking from midfield. Hmm. Now kicking into the wind, mind you. Yeah, you have two options here. You can go ahead and try to take your shot and put it into the end zone, which now comes out to the 25 this year in 2012, or you play the pop-up game and force someone to field it. Well, if ever there was a time to take a chance on special teams, I would think when you're sure. kicking off from midfield. And this will head right down the center, backing up is Williams to take an eight. That is Josh Williams, the brother of Scotty, who's over 170 yards rushing today with two touchdowns. Josh Williams in the first half carried four times for 15 yards. Yeah, and he's still just kind of coming along in the program. He didn't join the college until last week. He was dressed. He was at the Loris game on Saturday, but now he has a six or seven play package set for him, and he'll continue to grow within the offense. First and 10. Perko out of the gun for the Blue Jays, who are in front 24-13. Gabry's in motion. Hand off to Williams, and he stumbles out of the backfield. Loss of one on the play. That's actually, they got James Richardson in there. Ben Moore with the initial contact for time. He's a young man, a freshman out of West Park, Florida. Richardson, a freshman. Seeing some playing time here in the third quarter. And he'll stay in the ball game. Gabriel's off the left side, huge hole. Gabriel's down the center. Couldn't spin his way free, but does pick up a first down out to the 41 yard line. They run this little loop motion with their H back fullback. A lot of individuals they can run through those two positions. We saw this a lot last year with Griffin Gibson. This time it's Gabriel's. Take a look. It's really a zone action away, same concept up front, but it looks like a veer. Gives you a couple of different options. Furco can pull it down and run the speed option with it. Great job by Vince to get some positive gain. Double wide to the near side, inside of five minutes to play in the third. Option for Richardson, who's tripped up. Very little, maybe a yard after the handoff, and Scotty Williams will return for the Blue Jays, taking the place of Richardson on the field. With the tackle. Well, Richardson has a ton of agility and speed. We saw a lot of him last week out in Dubuque. Coach Lester giving him a few reps here. Seven carries, 45 yards a week ago in Elmhurst's season opening win over Loris. Second down and eight. Play fake for Furco, pressure coming. Furco is dropped. Oh, he threw it away somehow. <laughs> Savvy play by the senior quarterback, Joe Furco, able to underhand scoop it to the sideline. Trying coaches are upset, looking for an intentional grounding. Will Caspers was actually in the vicinity, though, and this is all Joe Furco, broken play from the outset. Well, he's clearly outside of the pocket. There's no issue there. I think what the coaches might be saying is his knee was down, but clearly not. Great job by the senior quarterback. And the tail end of the picture, you did yep. see the receiver come into the play as well. Third and eight. Big play. And Furco will check off. It's a run for Williams. Williams with a hole. Williams onto the trying side, first down. Well, Adam Smith, the right tackle, 6'5", 300 pounds. And his running mate, Peter Stamos at right guard, 6'4", 275 paved the way for number 20 Williams to pick up the big first down for the Blue Jays. Williams closing in on 200 yards rushing today. 
Two touchdowns, 24-13 Elmhurst as the third quarter winds down. Furco out of the gun, stands at midfield. Directs Lindahl into motion. Serves as a lead blocker for Williams, who bounces away from a hit, but has dropped after a gain of about two on the play. Got a Williams, the ball carrier. Williams was hit, backed up, <laughs> went right at it again, Looks and then was and dropped Benji immediately. Boy, well, really pinballed off of it. Looks like Benjamin Moore. Take a look. Moore really came up and gave him a stick, but didn't wrap up. Williams able to run his feet, bounce off the play, try and rallies to it. Is What's the, the rule, Tony? Can't tackle high. That's right. That's right. Got to slow down the legs. Again, it's Richardson now back at running back. Second and eight. Furco dropping. Pocket collapses. Furco spins away. Throws just out of the reach of Will Casper's incomplete. Well, I'll tell you what, Furco's mm -hmm. done a very good job today. When that pocket collapses, sensing that pressure coming immediately. Well, a little bit of a breakdown here. It's the left guard that time, Adam Connors, not really moving his feet. He's a first-year starter at left guard. The only offensive lineman without any starting experience from a year ago for the Jays. That time, Furco was savvy enough to get rid of the football. Well, this is a big play for the Trine defense. Third and eight with 2.48 to play in the third. 24-13 Elmhurst. Furco rolling right, looking to throw. Changing course and spots Corey Tunn. Fifth catch today for Corey Tunn and an Elmhurst first down at the Trine 34. Mr. Reliable. Take a look at this. Again, Furco making something happen here. Tun just sitting down. Not his initial read. But like we talked about earlier in the game, Tim, the patience and the confidence of a senior fourth-year quarterback to settle down and find his receiver. Two and a half to play in the third. Elmhurst on the move. String of 24 unanswered points came to an end when Trine marched down and scored on their last possession. First and 10, it's Williams running right. Williams inside the 30, keeps moving down towards the 20, Williams, the ball eight yard line. And Williams picking up six yards. He's at 198 today. Tony's doing some quick math. Not my strong suit, so I'm glad it's you. Did you say 198 on that? 198 on that. Okay. Yeah, Scotty's officially now in second place, knocking on the door of the all-time rushing yardage record. We didn't think he'd get here today, but he's got a chance. Williams straight ahead. Williams busts a move. Williams to the outside is denied shy of the 10-yard line. One more move and he's into the end zone. Just an incredible desire out of number 20. Take a look at it here. Straight downhill, able to show off a little bit of his power, his agility, breaks tackles. He's always downhill. He's very difficult to bring to the ground. Low center of gravity, just an incredible running back. And Williams exits for Richardson. Something else about Scotty Williams, you'll notice whenever he's about to be hit, he's always holding on with sure. two hands. And then when he breaks away, that's when he works it into one side. Play fake, Furco throws, Got wide him. open. Ryan McGuire, touchdown. What an answer by the Blue Jay offense. They came right back down the field when Trine was pressing. Joe Furco leads him back, Scotty Williams. Great answer by the Blue Jay offense. First touchdown today for Joe Furco as he connects with Ryan McGuire for the first time today. And now it's 30 to 13. Well, a lot of questions coming into today. How would Elmhurst react to a strong non-conference foe in trying? They have showed very well today at Langhorse Field. Kick is up. And good, 31-13 with 105 to play in the third. Joe Furco with his first touchdown pass of 2012. The first time he is connected with Ryan McGuire as well. The six-foot senior tight end was wide open over the middle, and Elmhurst responds. Take a look at the play action. I've said this a couple of times today, but Joe does a great job, stands in the pocket, 
Strong throw, puts it on the back shoulder where only McGuire can get it, and he does. Great job surveying the field. McGuire not his initial read, but comes back to him later in the play. I like the footwork of Joe Furco as well, who's always moving in the pocket. Very steady. And I don't know if he caught it on the last PAT by Thomas, but he keeps putting balls over the fence. We're going to have to raise the budget for the footballs here. He cleared the fence on the backside of the goalpost there. I was walking in today, and a few footballs were flying at me over the fence. I was <laughs> gracious enough to save Elmhurst a few dollars by flipping them back. We appreciate it. David Thomas teeing off for the Blue Jays. Well, certainly now if you do the math at 31-13, 18 points makes it a three touchdown game in terms of the difference. Huge, huge drive for the Jays. And thinking about it, he'll take it out. Career thought forever, and that hesitation is going to prevent him from reaching even the 10 yard line. Well, if you're gonna take the ball out, just take it out. Well, the young man there, Purrier, I think that's a little bit of venting of frustration. He has been basically eliminated from the game plan today by the Blue Jays, and that time just wanting to make a play for his team puts him in a tough position. A flag after the play, though. This coverage unit for the Jays heard all week how dangerous the trying Thunder returners can be. Signaling something against Trine. A hold against the Thunder. We'll bury him back inside the 10 yard line. Looks like they'll march it half the distance from the 11. But a personal foul after the play as well. So we have two fouls against Trine. So the Thunder coming undone here in the late goings of the third quarter. Take another look. Purrier surprised some of his teammates there bringing it out. Thunder will start first and 10 at their four. I don't know where the personal foul would have come in there. Pretty good coverage by Miles Hamblin. He's a sophomore out of Fallbrook, California. Penalty wise today, Trine has been hit with four. Elmhurst eight, and that was before the double infractions, which backed the Thunder up to their own four yard line. Can the defense maybe come up with a play here? Sure. Well, you pin them back now. So far, Trine has been very conservative using the running game, the conservative passing game with the bubble screens. Hargraves is under center. Hard count. Hands off, straight ahead. And Michael Inge dropped immediately, in fact, behind the line of scrimmage. Well, the Blue Jay defense playing with a lot of confidence now. You've got Trine pinned back. Loss of one on the play. Get another look at it. Jay's able to get some penetration on the play. Jamal Lane gets credit for that last tackle. Second and 11. Motion to the far side. Play fake for Hargraves. Throwing out of the shadows of his goal post. And now he has some space in front, a lead block. Hargraves, Hargraves the shoved out here. shy of the first down marker. He'll pick up about nine Not yards on the keep. Side. And it'll be third and short for trying on offense. Well, you won't be able to get it on the television feed here, but on the backside of the play, Hargraves is looking the entire way at his backside receiver, Jamal Lane. And Alec Giles had him double covered. Hargraves had one read and tucked it down. That's, That's the end, end of the third, third quarter. quarter. Elmhurst 31. 31, trying 13. The Blue Jays led 17-7 at the half. Marched down and scored right away. Biggest play of the afternoon perhaps may have come on a third and eight. A 10 yard completion from Joe Furco to Corey Tunn to move the change and keep that last drive moving just when Trine thought they had an opportunity to potentially continue to build on momentum after their touchdown.
Good cheerleaders crowd. enjoying some of the festivities today. Good crowd today at Langhorse Field. Couldn't have picked a better Saturday afternoon. Sun is shining, nice breeze. Tim Calderwood alongside Tony Minestra. Third quarter numbers now. Elmhurst over 400 yards of offense, 411, compared to 230 for Trine. Elmhurst with 255 yards on the ground, 212 of those from Scotty Williams. Joe Furco, 8 of 17, 156 yards and a score. Corey Tunn with 113 yards receiving. Trying with 144 yards rushing and only 86 through the air. 77 yards from Jared Barton, who we have not seen since a slight injury. And as soon as I say that, Barton returns to begin the fourth. Well, 44 carries by the Elmhurst offense, minus the sacks down to 42. It's just been an incredible performance by this offensive line in terms of moving the line of scrimmage. Barton straight ahead, Barton looking for the first carry. down. Does he have it? That's going to be very close. Speaking of the line of scrimmage, the defensive line of the Jays there rising up and making a play. Tony, let's back up as there's an injured trying player. Let's back up to the first possession of the game. Oh. 17 plays, 75 yards for Trine. Elmhurst immediately responded with a 17-play drive of their own, which provided the defense plenty of time to sit back and adjust their game plan. And from that point on, Trine has been struggling to move the ball against the Elmhurst defense. Yep. Two punts, a turnover, and then the end of the half was what Trine did with the rest of their possessions after that initial sort of burst on the first drive of the game. Credit the defensive coaching staff and the players for making the proper adjustments. The young man here is able to be helped off the field, but the defense was on roller skates that first drive. The offensive line of Trine really controlling the point of attack, but what a turnaround here for the Jays defense in the second half. That's the center, Michael Chernoff. Placing very little weight on his left leg as he departs. Third down conversions for both of these teams. Trying with a third down conversion moments ago. They're five of eight on third down. Elmhurst, seven of 10. That's impressive mm. on both sides. And a lot of that damage has been done on the ground in terms of picking up yardage for third down for the Blue Jays. First and 10 for Trine. Hargraves rolls right, throws over the middle. First down completion. Sean Collins snares it over the 30 yard line for a first down. A little sprint action to the three receiver side. That's your backside tight end kind of bending across the backside of the formation and Hargraves is looking for him the whole time. Collins with one catch last week covering 29 yards. Picks up a first down here for the Thunder. Hargraves angling right, pressure coming, avoids it, looks for a lead block, and now instead dumps it off. And oh ping-ponging his way around is Javante Hentz, who ends up picking up another first down for the Thunder. Tim, if we get another look at this play, I want you to take a look at Tyler Demas. He initially disengages from his blocker that's looking to get him on the edge. Take a look. There's Demas right there. Just missed. But watch this. Look who makes the tackle on Hargraves coming back door. Here comes Demas. No quit there. Great effort by number 41. Out of the gun. Barton. Couple of yards nearing the 45-yard line. Second and eight. Well, it looks like Barton got hogtied down that time. He's struggling a little bit here. 31-13 Elmhurst. Blue Jays looking for a victory here on Community Day. The home opener at Langhorst Field in 2012. Trying to improve to 2-0 on the young season. Hargraves out of the gun. Has time, looking far side, throwing, and Hentz is there. Was he inbounds? Didn't look like it incomplete. Well, the Jays are going to make you do this. They're using a too high safety look this season, which is different from a year ago. They're using Giles and Ritter on the back half of the defense. This time, Trine tries to go to a high-low action where they get into that pocket behind the corner and in front of the safety. That time, not able to pull it in. But Giles needs to get off the hash and attack that route. Well, if you're Hargraves, the positive, you put it in a spot where only the receiver could make the play. 
Hargraves did throw an interception earlier. Play fake to Barton up the middle. Pocket collapses, throws. It's yep. Hence missed tackle. Hence angling right towards the 20, inside the 20. Dragged down by Tuxen at the 18-yard line. A big pickup for trying. Well, they come right back to it. This time they work double move. They show the corner route, which they did before, trying to hit the window, and they come back inside in front of Giles. Take a look. Hit him on the right on the inside hash, right in front of the safety. Giles not able to bring him down. How about Tuxen? A lot of effort there getting him downfield. But now they're starting to pick on the safeties, work a little one-on-one -on -one with these receivers. Combined, both teams are seven for seven in the red zone today. Hargraves looked left, nothing there. Has to tuck and run. Inside the 10, still on his feet. Inside the five and down to the th three-yard line. A bit of a miscommunication there maybe amongst the umpiring staff. Was Hargraves ever really down? I don't think he was. I think they blew they the whistle to stop the play. Helmet came flying off here off the screen. If you take another look, Hargraves again doing it all with his legs. You can't see it quite here There's on the television. There's the helmet. Yeah. yeah. No, and he was able to spring free at the last moment. They no. blew the whistle thinking that Progress was stopped at the three-yard line. And look, you can see the referee has his hands on his head there. Sure he does. Well, the Blue Jays catch a little bit of a break there. Maybe slow the momentum here, the Triumph Thunder. They have fought back here. At the four-yard line. Furious rally by the Thunder with uh, 13 minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. And the referee is providing an explanation to both sides, wow. it appears, here. Helmet. Looks like they'll get a first and goal here. Four cracks at the end zone for the Trine Thunder. Four wide. Looking left. Hence dragged down to the Hence two. The, reception. the quick dump off into the flat on the left side, but Hence had no real estate. They run their bubble screen here. This time Giles does a great job. Just getting him to the ground. The the Hence down there. Officially a gain of just a yard on the completion to Hence. And you got to think quarterback court. draw here. Hargraves lost the snap. Oh, Ball is loose. Still free on the ground. Loose. Who has it? About five Blue Jays jump <laughs> on top and a big turnover at an inconvenient time for trying. Wouldn't you know it? The inadvertent whistle by the referee comes back to haunt the Trine Thunder, but credit the Jays' defense. They had to step up and make a play. Blue Jays will get the football back. Miscommunication that time by the running back. It hit off the helmet of the running back. Yeah, it looked like Barton came in front of the play there. Ball bouncing around a little bit. Both teams had a shot at it. <laughs> There's about five Blue Jays. You can see they were all helping each other to make sure no one could jump in late. Big turnover, second of the game for Trine. One interception and one fumble. For the first time today, a team is unsuccessful in the red zone. It's first and 10 for the Blue Jays. Well, now the attention turns to the offense, and right now, Scotty Williams is about 40 yards away from the school's all-time leading rushing mark. Plenty of opportunities. It's Williams receiving the call. Leapfrogging one tackler, keeps his feet moving towards the first down marker. And it is a first down. True test of an offensive line here. Obviously four returning starters, a lot of veteran savvy, but everyone in the stadium knows that number 20 is getting the football, though still, still able to move the sticks. And Williams will exit. Scotty Williams closing in on some unprecedented territory today. Gabris, wall carrier, keeps it moving up near the 25 yard line. Gain of five on the play. He's near both the career record, which Tony has been referencing a lot, and also the single game total. And this is their first for the Thunder. 255 yards is the single game record 
set by Derek Walker in 1995. Twice last season, Scotty Williams ran for 235. Richardson, though, remains as the running back for the time being. On a second and six with 11-10 to play. 31-13 Elmhurst. Couple of big turnovers. Here's Richardson. Running left and hit behind the line. Now Richardson has a ton of talent and ability, but that time you see the difference in a freshman and a fourth-year player in Scotty Williams. Richardson that time too quick to bounce it outside and trust his blockers. Not a lot of help outside there. He'll learn. He'll come along. He's got a great couple of mentors along the way. Perrier on the tackle. First time we've seen him defensively really today for trying. Yeah, and you look at his body language. He's really kind of sort of just carrying himself lackadaisical. He's, he hasn't seen a lot of action. He's in the boundary here. They've really stayed away from number five. Third and six. Furco keeps. How about this? Straight ahead. First down first for Joe down Furco the across the first 35 to the 36. <laughs> Option keep for Furco. It was there. You keep it there until the last minute, and then you decide, and he kept it himself. Well, just when you think you have it figured out, that time Furco reads the defensive end, makes the proper pull. Nice play by the senior savvy quarterback that time, moving the sticks. First and 10. Scotty Williams stands in back of Joe Furco. Gabriel's in motion. Williams up the middle, hit a couple of times, bounces around and falls forward for a pickup of two to the 38. Get another look here, Furco into the belly of Williams. He holds it high and tight, Fair running those legs. Even on a one or two yard gain, he is working for every inch. Into the game now is Josh Williams, it looks like. Wildcat, Furco to the near side, split out as a receiver. Josh Williams as the quarterback with his brother Scotty next to him. Josh Williams. Runs to the left side, hole for Josh Williams to pick up the first down to midfield. What an experience it has to be for these two brothers as you take a look at Josh, the freshman. What an incredible opportunity it is to play with your younger brother, your older brother, to play together in the same backfield. Probably grew up challenging each other in the backyard for years and downers. Just a wonderful opportunity for the two brothers, and we'll see another down of it here. Josh Williams again lines up at quarterback. Furco still in the game, lined up in the slot on the right side. Josh Williams fakes the handoff to his brother, keeps straight ahead, picks up just a yard onto the try and side. But more importantly, the clock continues to run with Elmhurst leading 31-13. Well, you have to assume with only a week of padded practices for Josh Williams, what we've seen so far from him today is a very limited package. He'll continue to build that package over the coming weeks. And with Chicago next week and a bye week, you can bet that North Central is going to see a heavy dose of both Williams brothers in a multiple set sort of look for the Jays offense. It's going to be kind of similar to what North Central runs in a sure. lot of ways. A lot of what Tassio's doing down there too, yep. Second and nine. Option flip to Williams near side. Williams... Dragged out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Couple more for Williams. And here they run. This is the next play they run off of that little veer look. Lindahl comes underneath it. This time now you have to worry about Furco. They force the play. Make Scotty Williams take the edge on you here. And I got to tell you, Tim, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with what this offense has been able to do today. They've been very versatile. They've shown me a lot of different formations. They give teams and opposing coaches a lot to think about coming into a Saturday. 400 yards and counting for the Blue Jays today. Furco calls for a timeout. Play clock was down to one with 7.55 to play in the game. The Blue Jays will come to the sideline and talk about a third and seven upcoming here at Langhorst Field. And again, Elmhurst will wrap up the non-conference season on September 15th against Chicago under the lights here at Langhorst Field. Additionally, the Blue Jays 
will then have a bye week before opening conference play at North Central. And that really couldn't have set up any better. I mean, if, if you have to play North Central in a season, and of course, a conference foe, you'll have to face them at some point, you'd love to have it after a bye week. It's in Naperville, under the lights, certainly a hostile environment, but to have two weeks to prepare for the perennial conference champion couldn't have lined up any better for the Blue Jays. Still some work to be done here today, the rest of this Saturday. Just under eight minutes to go. Still a three-score lead for the Blue Jays, and they've been grinding it out this drive, able to pick up third downs. Another big third down here, third and seven facing the Blue Jays. Lindahl in motion. Hand off to Williams. Straight ahead, keeps moving, will not have a first down. Trying defense holds. But down three touchdowns with 7.43 to play. Yeah. That's okay. You have a 40 second play clock. Brian Hogan there first. Almost have to Brian. wonder if Elmhurst might use Joe Furco in a pooch punt situation here, something they did on several occasions throughout his career, because Furco right now is still on the field. Yeah, Tim, it's like you're in the coaching office. I heard this yesterday from Coach Lester. He said, look for Joe Furco to pooch punt it if we get into possession where we're on the other side of the 50 with a little too far to go. Well, I think, thankfully, for all those involved, I'm behind a microphone <laughs> and not a headset. Low snap, Furco angles one Furco towards the right the side. Air. It will bounce at the 11, continue to roll inside the 10, near the 5, where it's down. Gosh. And Trine takes down over with less than five, seven nine, minutes to play, four, trailing 31-13. Gotten pretty good at that the last We're couple of seasons. You're right, we've seen it a few times here. In, last year in 2011, they used Furco a little bit more as a full-time punter, that time able to pin him down inside the 10. Well, last year we referenced earlier in the game, the Blue Jays were incredible on offense. They ranked 15th in the nation in terms of total yardage, averaging just over 450 yards a game, but ranked 28th nationally in rushing at 220 a game. They've continued that pace here this year and look to exceed it moving forward. Officially, it is down at the four yard line, first and 10 for Trine. Hargraves with an I formation behind him. Play fake, Hargraves rolling to his right. Hits the fullback out of the backfield, but not a whole lot at all. Only four yards, in fact, on the connection between Hargraves and Jeff Harbrecht, Jr. out of Lowell, Indiana. I'll tell you what, as the Blue Jays are looking to find their, their mix of linebackers and, and front three as we get another look, Tyler Demas is putting in his application here. He's had a pretty good day. That time, Ryan Johnson able to make the play, a little flood look. Hargraves dumping off, dangerous pass. That was converged on very nicely by the Elmhurst defense. Dropping the running back, Barton, before he even had a chance to get started. Tuxin leading the charge. Well, 54's always got a nose around the football. He's just got a real steady way about him. He's been a team leader now for a couple of seasons. He's a senior now. Received some all-conference accolades last year. He's definitely the rock on the defensive side of the football for the Blue Jays. Third and six. Personnel issues for Trine. Well, under five seconds here on the play clock. Hargraves has to hurry. Time over the middle. Javante Hentz with the reception. Hentz, first down distance across the 15, out to the 17. Well, you talk about bend, don't break. These two safeties are playing back on the deep hashes. They'll allow the five and six yard crossing routes all day. When you have an 18 point lead and five minutes to go in the game, Trine has got to push the ball downfield. Hargraves rolling right, has to hurry, heat coming, and he throws with a flag down. Completion to Hintz. Those two have become best friends of late today. Officially out to the 20-yard line, very little there, but a penalty coming. And it looks like it'll back up the thunder. Got 
take another look. Hargraves really looking to push the ball down <laughs> the field. There's a flag in your screen. <laughs> and a flag there as well. Ooh, 3D today, Tim? Yes. Hope you had your glasses on for that one. <laughs> Boy, one of the small schematic changes that the Jays have, have, have put in place this year on defense is something I really like. I mean, it's an offense that's going to obviously score some points for you. Uh, and if teams are not able to push the ball down the field, which the Jays struggled with giving up big plays last year, it's very difficult to hang with the Blue Jay offense. So what they've done schematically, I think, is very, very smart. Hargraves will keep straight ahead. Hargraves with an opening. Hargraves lowers the shoulder and reaches the 25-yard line with five minutes to play in the game. Boy, Hargraves is not afraid to lay a shoulder down, isn't he? He, he likes contact, almost inviting contact with some of the linebackers and safeties today. Senior quarterback for the Thunder. Looking towards the far sidelines. 31-13 Elmhurst. Wins to either side, handoff straight ahead, it's Inge. Inge has the first down, he'll cross the 35 and reach the 38. Some new faces on defense, you have three new linebackers in. Anthony Beltrano anchors down the middle of the linebacking core with John Eliadis at one of the outside spots, looking to find the right mix at backer. First and 10. Hargraves throwing over the middle. It's batted down. Looks like Justin Phipps with his hands up to knock it down. A basketball player, Justin Phipps, here at the, at the college as well, and he's got that sort of build to him. 6'5", here with a mid-up. Take a look. That's one of the risks you run in those short dump-offs a lot of times. You can't put much velocity on them. You have to kind of try and arc your throws. Three down lineman for the Blue Jays. Second and 10 with 4.14 remaining. Hargraves steps up in the pocket, looking to throw over the middle. It's intercepted. Pass is picked off at the 40 yard line by Alec Giles. Giles will bring this one back to the 35 and the third turnover of the day for Trine may allow the Blue Jays to seal a win here at home. Great job, Alec Giles, in his first year starting, a 5'10", 155 junior on the back end of this defense. Reads Hardgraves the entire time. The safety jumps in front of the route. Impatience there costs Hardgraves, and the Jays are going to cruise to victory. 4.03 to play. Hargraves... Threw it right into double coverage, and he's been looking consistently towards Javante Hentz. That may have been one of the reasons for the easy pick there. Never took his eyes off the receiver. Gabriel's in motion, receives the handoff Gabriel's from Furco, diving across the 35 to the 33. Two yards on the play. Tick, 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 with 350 remaining. 31-13 Elmhurst. Well, Elmhurst had its 28-game September winning streak snapped last year against University of Chicago. 33-26 down in Hyde Park. It was a night game. Everything that could have went wrong for the Jays did. The Maroons capitalized and stole a victory from the Jays. You can bet that every single player that was a part of that experience remembers that night as next week the Maroons come to Langhorse Field at night. Richardson. James Wrestled down the after maybe a yard. There, Missing helmet on the play. Which means Charlie Hamaki will have to exit towards the near side. CJ Barons takes his place. Three ten remaining. Both teams have three timeouts at their disposal. But it looks as though Trine is about to concede defeat here. 31-13 Elmhurst. Gabriel's running left up the middle inside the 25, still on his feet, diving near the 20, a first down for the Blue Jays. Collins with the tackle. Well, that offensive line is continuing to flex its muscle here today. 
Take a look at the cutback here. Still gashing huge holes through that trine front seven. Experience goes a long way in the success of an offense, and this offense has a ton of it. First and 10 just outside the red zone. It's still Richardson as the back behind Furco. Now it's Lindahl in motion. Lindahl the carry. Flags oh. fly. Lindahl will reach the end zone, but it might be coming back. Huge opening created in the vicinity of where he was sprung. Chris Kirkpatrick standing with his arms waved in disbelief as a holding call will negate the touchdown. Well, Boo Kirkpatrick there pleading his case with the back judge. I think he owes Tommy Lindahl lunch. On the offense, number 67, the 10 yard penalty. See if we can pick it up there. Right. Tough to see with a great run though. 219 to play. Now first and 20 for the Blue Jays. Back to the 31. Uh, another new running back now. This is Josh Williams. Not running the Wildcat. Josh Williams running right, tries a stiff arm. He's dragged down after a Jack loss Williams, of about three, player. back to the 34. Well, you can see as Joe Furco's coming to the sideline, he's pointing to himself. I think Josh might have been a little bit confused on the, the direction of that play. And part of that has to do with the fact that he's learning on the fly. He is. He the is. freshman who has just been at Elmhurst for a little over a week. Inside of two minutes, trying to pick up some valuable game time here late with Elmhurst holding a 31-13 lead. 145 and counting to play. Impressive showing by the Blue Jays here at home. They'll try the play that scored a touchdown moments ago. And all inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line. Third down coming for the Blue Jays with 120 left. Well the efficiency with which this offense operates is very, very impressive. It's now the fifth season, as you get a look at Lindahl here off right tackle. Now the fifth season with head coach Tim Lester and his entire staff working with these young men. Really starting to show up here in the depth of the offense as well. Very impressive effort. Third and 18. Burko taking his time here with the play clock at five. Puts it in the belly of Josh Williams. And Josh Williams with a nice little stutter step, picking up five yards down to the 26. And it's fourth down for Elmhurst. And they will have to run another play. There's about a three second difference between the game clock and the play clock here. Well, a stiff non-conference test for the Jays here today. And they, boy, did they really answer the bell. The Trine Thunder come in out of the MIAA conference. Playoff credentials. The Jays really take it to them here today. Victory formation, best part of the day, right? Joe Furco looking at the play clock, knows how much time he needs to use here. With the play clock down to one, drops back to a knee, and that is all. Final score, Elmhurst 31, Trine 13. An impressive debut for the Blue Jays at home here in 2012. And Tony, they showed a lot of wrinkles on offense. This team is definitely a year older with more experience under their belt because, boy, they have some impressive, impressive weapons to use. Well, we have talked for many years in this broadcast, Tim, you and I, about the potential that this program has and the young athletes that they've brought along. It looks like, finally, they have maybe started to take root here and maybe take that next step forward. You said it, a lot of stuff on offense to be happy about. The defense showed up when they needed to. Great effort here by the Jays. Three big turnovers as well for Elmhurst today. We'll have the chance to ring the victory bell here at Langhorst Field for the first time in 2012 by virtue of a 31-13 win over Trine. Elmhurst is 2-0 on the season. Trine will drop to 1-1 in this matchup of the CCIW and the MIAA. It is Elmhurst with the 18-point win 
here today. We'll await some final numbers quickly before we say fare thee well on this afternoon. A beautiful afternoon for football. We mentioned from the outset that fall is a sign of new beginnings. It's the start of school, the start of the changing of seasons, and the start of football as well. And Elmhurst will ring the victory bell here at Langhorst Field following a 31-13 win. And Tony looking inside the numbers, 475 yards of offense for the Blue Jays today, 319 of those coming on the ground, 229 from Scotty Williams, who flexed his muscles again in another strong performance. And very important yardage, too. You look at the 475, obviously important, but how about 77 offensive plays run by the Jays as you get a get to listen to the Langhorse bell here. Always great to hear that on Saturday afternoon. How about 9 of 14 on third down? The Jays were just extremely efficient on offense, able to move the football up and down the field. Uh, you know, not much more to say than, than wow. The Jays were really, really strong today with the football. Trying to move the ball 75 yards on the opening drive of the game on 17 plays. And from that point on, they amassed less than 300 yards of total offense today. 350 total for Trine, 75 of which came on the first drive of the year. Elmhurst responded with 24 unanswered on the way to the win behind Scotty Williams. 35 carries, 229 yards, and two touchdowns. It was the Blue Jays 31 and the visiting Trine Thunder 13 on this community day here at Langhorst Field. That'll be all for us here in the broadcast booth. For my broadcast partner, Tony Minestra, and our fine production staff, director Glenn Liljeberg, and producer Jeannie Urich, and our entire crew. I'm Tim Calderwood, Elmhurst 31, Trine 13. So long. Hi, I'm John Quigley, President and CEO of the Elmhurst Chamber of Commerce and Industry. In these challenging economic times, it's imperative that our residents and businesses band together to not only shop Elmhurst, but buy Elmhurst whenever possible. We have great stores in our city center, Spring Road, Butterfield Road, York and Vallette Streets, St. Charles and Route 83, North Avenue and Lake Street, along North York and even Grand Avenue. I ask for your help. Let's keep our tax dollars in Elmhurst.